So Ample Sound just released a new Guitar VST plugin, the Gibson Super Jumbo. Now the question is, is this plugin made for you and your home studio? So if you wonder whether you should buy this VST or not, you may want to know what is the history behind this instrument. And this is exactly the purpose of this video. We'll review which artist used it, how, why, and what kind of songs are best produced with a Super Jumbo. So stick around. So the Gibson Super Jumbo is quite an ancient guitar. Indeed, the first release date was 1939. If we go back to history, the guitar, called SG200, was then distributed at the end of the Great Depression that hit the world 10 years before. And in the context of economic difficulties, the guitar was seen as very expensive. Indeed, it costed $200 at a time when the monthly salary of an American worker was around $150. So the Super Jumbo was definitely a top-of-the-line guitar, made for kind of rich people. So who could be interested in buying such an instrument? Important fact, at the end of the 30s, the world was crazy about jazz music. Blues were on the rise, but people preferred to pay for jazz gigs, be it for dancing or for relaxing after work. And jazz guitarists loved to use a specific kind of instrument, called archtop guitars. Archtop, because the top of the guitar was carved in a curved rather than a flat shape. And that little difference gave the guitar a mellow and smooth tone, which jazz players preferred. But the Super Jumbo wasn't an archtop guitar at all. It was a flat top guitar, meaning it has a rich and bright timbre, not very suited for jazz musicians. So if people couldn't afford the guitar, and if jazz musicians didn't want it, then what were Gibson actually doing? In fact, they were aiming at other kind of artists, mostly from the country genre. Before the war, country music superstars like Tex Ritter or Gene Autry could in fact afford the guitar and use it on stage and for recording. But it's true that in 1939, the Super Jumbo wasn't that much of a commercial success. However, it doesn't prevent us from making great music with the Ample Sound VST guitar. So let's see what we can do. So I'm back in my home studio and I have the Super Jumbo VST guitar loaded. So just listen to the quick riff I made and then we'll analyze the plugin. So as you heard, the Ample Sound VST guitar has this rich and bright timbre that you may be looking for. The sound is honestly super realistic and I added no third party effects or whatsoever. So the chord progression is simple, C major, E minor and A minor. I just added a capo there, capo 3, but the song is super simple. But anyway, if we try to sound like pre-World War artists, we may need some kind of old-fashioned recording technology. So let's emulate the sound of a vinyl and let's listen to the song again. So let's come back to history. When the war ended in 1945, both the economic and the music context changed radically. First, the world entered a phase of economic growth and people got richer. 
Secondly, in the early 50s, the music market evolved. Although jazz music remained popular, other genres like blues and rock music were seen as the future of music, a whole new context for the Gibson Super Jumbo. Why? Because, as we said earlier, flat-top guitars were not appreciated by jazz musicians, but their rich and loud timbre were very well suited for rock and blues music bands, simply because flat-top guitars provided them with that extra shot of energy they needed. And when that person, Elvis Presley, started to use the super jumbo, the guitar quickly became a commercial success. And how could it not? Just have a look at the official video of King Creole, where the iconic figure of rock and roll music is carrying and dancing with the SG200. And well, it rocks, isn't it? So let's see if we can do the same with the Apple Sound VST guitar. So I'm back in the studio again and let's listen to what I've prepared for you. Now let's come back to history again. After the King, many rock and pop artists adopted the super jumbo. Once again, the clear, bright and kinda heavy timbre of the guitar provided them with that extra shot of energy they wanted. So when guitarists wanted their riffs to be heard, to be noticed and to be kinda the center of all attention, then the super jumbo worked really well. And that is exactly what Bob Dylan wanted when he recorded the Nashville Skyline album in 1975. He's even carrying the SG200 with him on its official picture. But he was not the only one. George Harrison or Jimmy Page, like many others, felt in love with the guitar. If you listen to Babe, I'm Gonna Leave You by Led Zeppelin, you can hear the bright sound of the Super Jumbo recorded in 1969. So if it's possible to play rock music with a super jumbo, well, we might be able to do something similar with the Apple Sound VST guitar. So I'm back in the studio again, and the song you're going to hear is much more simple than the two previous ones. The only difficult part was when I started to use suspended chords, but it sounds so beautiful, I couldn't help. So check this out. Honestly, could you believe it's not a real guitar? I'm 25, I've been playing guitar since I was born and there is no way someone can come up now and say, hey, sorry, but that doesn't sound right. But anyway, since we are in the 70s, I'm going to use another VST made by Ample Sound, uh, which is named AGTC2, which is a Telecaster. And I'm going to add a nice fat overdrive. So let's see how it sounds.
Ma, if you find this VST guitar wonderful but you do not know how to play with it, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you do not miss any of my tutorials on Apple Sound products. For the rest, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope to see you next time.